Hello, and welcome to Preparing to Survive and Thrive Homesteading Channel with Charlie B. So, what are we up to today? Well, we are back and answering that age-old question of what's for dinner. So, tonight we're going to do something a little different. We're going to do a stir-fry. And this is going to be a pork, ginger, and garlic stir-fry with a lot of other veggies in it. And one nice thing is stir-fries, the sky's the limit. You can do whatever you want to. Do it to your taste. But... I'm going to give you some guidelines that you can follow if you want to, or you can follow the recipe that I'm going to give you. So let me bring you down and show you how I did the meat. So what I have here is some pork, um, some pork tenderloins, the um, pork chops, the ones that I cook with often. And they're not very big. They're only like maybe two by four inches and only like a, maybe a quarter to a half an inch thick, depending on the cut. These guys have been soaking in milk for 24 hours. So I've got six chops that I've cut up that I will be doing. Um, once I get the milk drain, I'm going to go ahead and um, tell you how many cups there are so you can actually have a good measurement to go by. So let me get them drained and I'll be back. Okay, so first things first and I'm going to put about three tablespoons of oil in it. Yes, I'm eyeballing it. And we're going to start off with six cloves of garlic, which is actually about two tablespoons. We're going to put that right in here into the pan here. And we also have two tablespoons of fresh ginger that I just... Um, minced up so that will add a little bit of spice and good taste to it so we're going to let these go heating up a little bit get the um two spices mixed together and just kind of get them a little bit warm before we stick the meat in Take a little while, and by the way, I have about three and a half cups of pork between those um, six chops that I had that I'll be using. So let's get this heated up, and we'll be back. Okay, so while this garlic and ginger are heating up and just kind of cooking in with the oil, I'm going to take about one cup. So I'm going to do more like one and a half because I want to get rid of this. And I'm going to take three tablespoons of cornstarch and mix them together. Now this will make a nice thickening um, sauce for the stir fry. Now when I mix this up, all I do is take a fork and just mix it around. And you want to make sure you get it so it's not all lumpy. Cornstarch makes a sauce that is actually kind of translucent, unlike flour that makes a sauce that has a white until you brown it. Like your country gravies is just made with, um, with um, flour that hasn't been browned. Now granted, I know this has the beef broth, so it's going to be brown. So we're going to let this can sit here and finish mixing. And I'm going to literally stir this around. It actually started to brown some of them together. But it's got the oil in there. It's going to have an amazing taste. So I'm going to go ahead and just pull this out. And then I'm going to add a little bit more oil. And go ahead and add the meat. So just 
Give me one minute. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and add a little bit more oil to this. And I'm just going to brown. I already took out the um, ginger and garlic in here. Just going to quickly saute the meat up. Just be a few minutes. Now, remember when you cook or you um, marinate pork or chicken or any type of meat and milk, the lactic acid helps to actually break down the fibers and makes it a softer, more desirable cut of meat so it's much more tender. I'm going to turn this up to about medium low and just cook this real quick. Now, while I'm doing that, I'm going to be adding some different items into my sauce and let me get you adjusted so you can see my cup okay so this is cooking up nicely remember with pork you definitely want it all done when it cooked all the way through but this will cook a little bit more and when I mix it in with the vegetables but we're going to make sure that we're not going to end up making anybody sick so now we've got our sauce here. We started off with beef broth and cornstarch. Now we're going to add in three tablespoons of brown sugar. It can be light or dark, whatever you want to do it. And we're going to add in some sesame oil. It's the bottle. Got one and two. I'm cutting it close on this one. And this is something I need to add to my stores because I'm out of the sesame sauce or ses sesame oil now. And our next item will be some um, good dark soy sauce. This is um, tamari. And it's a brewed soy sauce. It's got a really great flavor. And I'm going to add three tablespoons of it. Now, if you want to, you can mix this with light and dark. So what I'm going to do is I don't have any other soy sauce that I want to use. So I'm going to go ahead and add a total of six tablespoons of soy sauce. And with this sauce. I'm just going to mix this together. And remember that ginger and garlic I pulled out? I'm going to place that right in here. I'm going to just let it all mix around. This is going to taste so good. Just crisping the garlic and the ginger together will really add a new flavor and an element of depth to this. So, okay, well, this is done cooking. The meat is. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and pull it out and start cooking the vegetables. So we'll be back in a second. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and start adding some more stuff such as the broth and with the little bit of meat juices that we have. And we're going to start adding our, our vegetables, sorry, not vitamins. Now remember, cornstarch is a thickening agent, so it will get thick as it cooks. And what, what veggies do we have to start off with? Hmm. First off is we have about, I have two different things in here. I have broccoli. I have about one and a half cups to two. And in the bottom, I have sugar snap peas in there. 
So these came from my garden and so did the broccoli. So we are actually trying to cook with what we have in our garden. We're also going to add one cup of shredded carrots. Sugar snap peas are really good to just eat raw. We love them. I'm also going to add a cup of yellow squash. It's also referred to as summer squash or cro crook neck squash. I'm going to add those right in there. I'm going to put this up on medium low to start cooking. And stir fries, you do not want to make your vegetables real, real um mushy you want to still have a little bit of a i wouldn't say crunch to it but you want them tender but not mushy this is gonna be so good and our next item we're gonna go ahead and add a little bit of onions in there so these were um, green onions. I pulled them from the garden. We're just going to let this cook. Shouldn't take very long. It's good and brothy in there, but it's all good. You'll see it will thicken, I swear. So let me get a lid on this and we'll be back when we put the meat back in it. Okay, so this is done. The vegetables are. Now let's check this out. Now we want it to be tender, but still have a little bit of, um, of crunchiness to it. There's the sugar snap pea. It goes in, but it's not flimsy or anything like that. It's just mice. They cooked. Let me bring it closer. Ooh, burnt myself. And the broccoli. It still has, you have to put some effort to it to get it to go through. Along with the crook neck squash. But this is done. And you see how thick the broth has gotten. And our next item is the pork. This is to just go in there and start heating up to warm it up again. And it's got a little bit of juice in it from the meat, which will add to the flavor. And of course you can salt and pepper to taste. Um, I'm not sure we're going to need any salt because the soy sauce normally has a good bit of salt. So I'm just not going to worry about that. And if we want salt and pepper, we'll put them on. But this is our stir fry. Pretty easy. Pretty much a one pot meal. And you don't have to use as many dishes as I do in order to cut up your vegetables and stuff. You can just throw them all in one big container and then dump them all in at one time. I do separate them so you can see what I'm doing. I'm going to let the meat warm up here. Put the lid back on. And we'll be back to do a taste test. Yay! Okay, so this stir fry is a meal in itself. You don't have to put a, pair it with anything else. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to pair it with some quinoa and brown rice. These are little microwavers. Um, stick them in the microwave for 90 seconds. Yes, I did not remember to cook my rice or cook my quinoa. I was actually going to do quinoa and I forgot to cook it. So I'm going to put this over or put this underneath and put the stir fry over it. So you can also put a noodle, like a ramen noodle in with a stir fry if you choose to do that. But this is going to be amazing the way it is. So we'll be back for our taste test. So here we are. We're ready for our taste test and you can see my nice mess back there. I'm not going to show you my sink because it is loaded with dishes until I get them in the dishwasher. So here we go. It's what my plate looks like. You can see I have garnished some um, little green onions, the tops of them, since I put the green onions in there, and also some peanuts. So if you're allergic to peanuts, please don't use peanuts in your, um, in your um, meal because it will, might kill you. 
So let's do a taste test. Let's taste this. Let's try the pork. A little bit of a green onion top on it. Mm -hmm. Pork is absolutely tender. The broccoli with some onion on it. Mm -hmm. Perfect. It's got a little bit of a crunch, but it's still good and tender to eat. And the sugar snap peas are my favorite. And the sauce is very good. Mm. Mm -mm -mm -mm. So... This is a good one pot wonder again. Just don't use all the measuring cups like I do. Just throw them all into one big one because you're not filming it. Okay, well, this is Charlie B signing out. And remember, if you like my content, please like, share, and subscribe. I'll be seeing you soon. Charlie B signing out again.